A few months ago, I showed you some clips of a town hall that occurred over Mother's Day weekend featuring Democratic Representative Ruben Kiwin. Now, Ruben is an individual that campaigned on a progressive platform. He maintained that healthcare is a basic human right, and once he was elected, he became a member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. So, by most standards, many would consider him a progressive, and rightfully so. However, there's something strange about Ruben Kiwin. Unlike most of his Democratic colleagues in the House, he has not co-sponsored H.R. 676, which is a single-payer health care bill that would make universal health care in America a reality. So his constituents showed up to ask him why he didn't co-sponsor H.R. 676, and throughout the course of this town hall, I focused on one attendee in particular, a grieving mother who shared her story with Representative Kiwin. She told him about how her daughter died because she was unable to provide proof of insurance and she did not receive basic medical screenings that would have saved her life. So this grieving mother shared her story and she said that one death is one too many and she asked him kindly to co-sponsor HR 676 to make sure that what happened to her daughter never happens again. And what happened next was appalling. Representative Kiwin looked her in the eyes, and after hearing her story, he said no. Now, I don't know how anyone with a heart could tell her no after hearing her story, but that's what Representative Kiwin did. So, I was outraged. My viewers were outraged after we saw what he did. And thousands of people flooded his office with calls. We actually filled up his inbox in both offices. And what I called him, this was what I said. And let me just tell you this, if you are not willing to co-sponsor HR 676, we will be primarying you, you will be voted out of office, and even though you just were sworn in, you will be losing your job. And I will be doing everything I can to pour money into the campaign of your primary challenger in 2018 if you do not co-sponsor HR 676. Now, when I made that threat to Ruben Kiwin and told him that I would attempt to primary him if he didn't co-sponsor H.R. 676, I wasn't bluffing. And now, months later, he still hasn't co-sponsored H.R. 676 after he has received thousands of phone calls, after telling that mother no. But I now have some exciting news, so I am now honored to bring you an exclusive announcement regarding that very subject about Ruben Kiwin. As many of you already know, I have been advocating nonstop for healthcare across Nevada, as well as across the nation. I've been telling the story of my daughter, Shalin. Two years ago, Shalin went to the emergency room with nearly all the signs, symptoms, and risk factors of a blood clot. Because she was unable to provide proof of health insurance, she was denied the appropriate care, which ultimately led to her dying in my arms from a pulmonary embolism. Her death at the hands of our nation's barbaric, profit-driven healthcare system, tragically, is an all too familiar story. The fight, not only against repealing the ACA, but for expanded and improved Medicare for All has become my calling. I didn't choose this fight, it chose me. Recently, at yet another town hall, I once again witnessed a self-proclaimed progressive congressman regurgitating the same old corporatist rhetoric, circumventing the real reason our healthcare system is failing, profit. As a businesswoman, I understand all too well that insurance and pharmaceutical companies are solely motivated by profit margins. But I'm not just a businesswoman. I'm a human, a grieving mother, a Nevadan, and now an activist. I know that healthcare is a human right, not just another consumer product, in order to ensure that all Americans have quality, comprehensive health care, we must remove profit margin from the equation. We must fight loudly and proudly for Medicare for all. So today, I'm announcing my intention to bring this fight for my home district all the way to Washington. 
We don't have time to wait around for career politicians, their donors, or special interests to do the right thing. We need bold action now. We need representatives in Washington that understand the stakes of this fight and who will never stop advocating for the people. I'm Amy Valella, and I'm much, much more than a grieving mother. But because I am a grieving mother, I will never give up. I will never get tired, and I will never stop fighting for justice and dignity for Nevadans and for all the people of this country. Stay tuned for more information in the coming days and weeks about my campaign. Thank you. I'm Amy Valella, and I approve this message. Well, I think reforming our health care system is a process, and we need to have um, representatives that are representing the interest and um, the best interest of their constituents. And unless we have people who are willing to be bold and to fight this fight loudly and boldly in Congress, we will never be able to get to um, Medicare for all. You know, um, like many Americans, I was always told that if you do all the right things, if you are working and you're going to college and you're supporting your family, that you're safe and the system works. But um, unfortunately, you know, I found out the hard way that this is not true. It is so important. And every day that goes by, there's another individual or family that's facing a health care crisis and um, either losing their life or they're trying to navigate a health care crisis without even concentrating on their illness for sake. Um, and they're concentrating on how are they going to pay for their health care services or they're foregoing medicines or treatments because they are worried about the cost or they just simply can't afford it. I know that it was really uh, a game changer for me that um, I really looked at Representative um, Kiwin as a low hanging fruit, like it was not someone I'd really have to concentrate on because he is a member of the Progressive Caucus. It surprised and shocked me um, that the numerous times that I reached out, the times I called his office, that I went and visited his office, I sent emails, and this was all before that town hall that you saw. It really shocked me that even with a face-to-face meeting, that um, first of all, he would not co-sponsor, and I felt that his responses were um, disingenuous that he was not being forthright in the reasons why he would not co-sponsor H.R. 676. And even with the numerous attempts afterwards to still try to um, get him to co-sponsor, he has repeatedly refused to do so. And to me, this is a life and death situation. There's nothing worse than having to hold your loved one in your arms and to have them die. And, and as a mother, I could say, especially as a mother or a father, to watch a child that you've raised and loved um, from the time they were young, to have them die in your arms for something so preventable. Uh, not only are you consumed with grief, but it's compounded with rage and anger and frustration at this system that we live in this great country and we still do not have the basic human right of health care that 33 other nations, comparable nations to the United States, have. As an American people, we are tired of having profit put over us, the 99%. So you are running a people-powered campaign. You're working with people uh, from the draft Bernie movement. Um, so can you just tell us about what you guys are doing and what the focus is going to be on? Really, we're building alliances with many different organizations um, and really finding a safe place for all these people who are disenfranchised at not being presented um, to, in our um, government system because their, their representatives are putting profit over people. Um, my platform is going to be making sure that people are put over profit, um, whether it's racial, social, economic, and those things, usually they try to make them so they are separate problems, and they forget that there's a huge intersectional qualities of those, of those issues, and they don't address that. 
Um, when we have injustices in one of those, then we'll have injustices across all of those issues. Um, I am really, really big on that. Um, there needs to be racial justice, um, whether it's in our prison population, pay, housing, housing for LGBTQ people, um, whether it's, you know, like Lena would say, my whole damn dollar. <laughs> um, you know, there are, there are so many injustices and they really all stem to the same, same issue. It's fundamentally that profit is being put over people. So that is really what I'm running. And, you know, coming from a background as an executive level accountant, I understand completely how for-profits work. And I understand that um, we need to make sure that profit is not in places where it should not be, such as healthcare, prisons. Um, these are things that should not have profit involved, school systems. We need to have um, equality and justice in all those areas. One of the, the main things that I am also um, really concentrating on is having sustainable energy that will improve everything. It needs to be economically um, sustainable as well as environmentally friendly and putting some infrastructure in place that puts us on the same level as other countries as they're developing this, we're falling behind because we're letting the market drive our decisions on our um, all of these issues. It's it's always being market driven, and and again, it's another it's another example of putting profit over people. So I know you know definitely it's Medicare for all. I don't think I'll be able to get there um, quick enough to co-sponsor. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'll ask if I can fax it over, maybe. <laughs> um, and also democracy. We need, um, one of the big things too, is we need to have our, um, our campaigns clean again, clean financing of, of our campaigns, um, get rid of Citizens United. That's major. Open up our primaries. Um, also, you know, hopefully we can get something where we can have ranked voting, um, and move towards publicly funded elections. We need to start being able to have people represent us that are for the people. We the people. Um, I think a lot of times we get really caught up in politics and all this, um, you know, which which party you in and all this. Bi you know, to me, a lot of the issues we're arguing about are bipartisan. If we talk about the issues, and that's something I would really strive towards is to really keep on on the issues and not get caught up in all of the other drama that's happening. Um, you really see a lot of politicians out there getting caught up in that and they're not listening to the people. So one of the things that we're going to do in, in my campaign is that we're going to have a listening tour. I want to hear from the constituents in CD4, what are the things that are that they're worried about? What are the top priorities for the constituents in CD4? And really listen and knock on every door. We need to hear from everyone from every economic background, from every social background. We need to hear what are the, the primary issues that they're facing and how can we help them. And again, that's done by knocking on every door. So um, that's something I'd like to do. And, and I know, too, that, um, you know, coming from the background I came from, I wasn't always an executive. You know, being a single mom and raising two children on my own, there are many times that I had to use the safety nets that are in, in our system you know, I've been on Medicaid for pregnant women and children. I've been on WIC. There was a time I was um, temporarily on food stamps. As I was putting myself through college, um, while I worked and took care of my children, and it's very, very, very difficult and hard for anyone to come out of that system. It is so hard right now the way it's set up. Um, it, it's almost impossible. I can't tell you how many times that I had a choose between feeding my kids or seeing if we could go to someone's house to eat or, you know, who has gas on that we can go or water on and can I let that go instead of the electricity? These are real problems. And, you know, when I hear things like politicians saying, well, instead of buying that cell phone, you should have bought health insurance. Wow. Are they really out of touch with what is the everyday experience for the majority of our population? <laughs> that is not the issues that are facing the 99%. That I can tell you, and especially people that are having difficulties in their life. So many of uh, Americans are one paycheck, one job away from poverty. 
and they don't have anything in. You know, one of the things you hear now that are even throwing around is having a, a savings plan for health care. Um, a lot of people are just trying to pay the electric bill. So <laughs> I'm that is what's striking me is that they really don't, they are not um, really in touch. And we need Americans who understand what it's like for a typical American, the 99% you know, what it's like for them, their struggles. And I can tell you, I understand a lot of those struggles from my background and from what I did. It wasn't handed easy to me. Um, and so these are a lot of um, issues that are close to me. Um, you know, even what we haven't spoken about, even immigration, having humane immigration policies. You know, um, my husband's an immigrant. Um, also, my sister's husband was an undocumented immigrant from Mexico. Um, Fifteen years he lived trying. They had to fight to try to get him to get um, become a citizen, even leaving the country. And it was insanely expensive and difficult to navigate. So um, I feel like I have a lot of experience and a lot of real-life issues. Um, and I also have to counterbalance that a lot of experience in the business world as an executive, and I understand how this all balances and how we might be able to move our country forward to representing the people, we the people, um, instead of just the special interests, the 1% and the wealthy. So what can we do to help you succeed? Can we knock on doors for you? Can we make calls for you? And where can we find out more about your campaign? Um, we definitely are a grassroots um, campaign. So we're going to be doing clean campaigning. So we are not going to be having any super PACs or anything of that sort. Um, it will be from small donations. That is important to me. I don't want to take money from the institutions possibly that had played a part in why my daughter is dead. I, that is not something I'm interested in. I want it to be about we the people. You can find out more and um, you can donate your time, money, calling for us, anything um, at Amy, the number four, the people dot com. So my website's Amy for the people dot com. Um, we are definitely a grassroots campaign and um, there'll be more to come in, in Nevada. And uh Stay tuned for our platform because we have a lot more coming um, beyond even just me on this. So um, we're very excited. We have um, some excellent activists here. And uh, it feels good to, um, to be doing something about it and to not just be accepting that this is what we're given. Um, that's not what America was based on. America was based on the people having a voice. So... We are definitely for the people. We are we the people for the people. And, uh, and that's how we're going forward with this campaign. So I want not just Ruben Kewin, but also other members of Congress to learn from this experience. The next time you're at a town hall event and you tell one of your constituents no and refuse to represent them, they might just come for your job one day. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.